Now let's move on down. He says, I've written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. That is, they didn't know anything about it. Now, let me repeat this again today. I say this many times, but because so few are saying it, I say it more times than I probably need to say it. And it's just simply this. As we've already seen here, God says, I've given them my written word. And to them, it's a strange thing. They're ignorant of it. And friends, that's the condemnation of our nation today. We try to pass as a civilized Christian nation. We're anything but that. And the ignorance of the Word of God today is, to me, one of the most amazing things that there is in this land. And that's the reason we're committed to teach it. I think the Word of God needs to be taught. And I consider that the biggest business today that the church has is to get out the Word of God. I don't think your preacher is to be a business administrator. I don't think that he's called upon to be a social lion and to be able to mix and mingle with people. The important thing is when he stands in that pulpit, does he give you the Word of God? And friends, if he does, you stand back of him and you back him. But if he's toying around and playing today and riding the fence, I don't ask you to support a man like that, and especially in liberalism. But we need to stand back of men who are teaching the Word of God. And across this land, there are many today that are doing that. But frankly, though, I think they are the men that are getting a hearing today. Yet, they're not getting the hearing that they should have. And we rejoice oftentimes about the way this little program of ours has grown. But I want to say to you, we're just a drop in the bucket. This nation is ignorant of the Word of God. Now he says, they sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offerings, and they eat it, but the Lord accepteth them not. They go through the ceremony. They've got the ritual, and they know the vocabulary. But that's all it is. And the Lord knows them and doesn't accept them. I discovered as a pastor that you have a few people who learn the vocabulary of fundamentalism. And fundamentalism has a vocabulary. They know when to say, praise the Lord, and the Lord bless you. They're a wonderful expression. But I tell you, in the mouth of some people, it freezes me in my tracks when I hear some make a statement like that. Because, my friend, it's just a ceremony. It's just an outward show. Now he goes on and he says that the Lord accepteth them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and judge their sins. They shall return to Egypt. Now, I don't want to go into this, but I think it's becoming increasingly evident today that when Babylon destroyed Assyria, that many of the ten tribes joined with the ones that were taken into Babylonian captivity of Judah. And many of them returned back to the land. And as you know from Jeremiah, many of the people in that day, after the Babylonian captivity, went into Egypt. And actually, I think that's what Hosea is saying here. Now, I can't get very much backing for that from some very fine commentators that I respect a great deal Bible expositors today that I listen to. But that's just my own private judgment, and you take it for what it's worth, which may not be very much. Now, verse 14. For Israel hath forgotten his Maker, and buildeth temples, and Judah hath multiplied fortified cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities, shall devour their palaces. Now, God says that Israel hath built temples. They tried to build substitutes for the temple in Jerusalem. And the very interesting thing is that it was in that temple, and that temple only, that God said sacrifices were to be made to him. But Judah has sinned also. God will judge them later. But the thing that's going to happen to these that were building these temples they are to be destroyed. 
And if there is a section of that land that seems to me to be more desolate than any other section, because it ought not to be. Now, way down in the Negev, they don't get any rain. It's a very arid area, and you expect it to be that way. But up in the northern section, you wouldn't expect to see a desolation as you see it, and especially when you have a valley like the Valley of Esdraelon. It's probably the richest valley in the world even today. But yet, all around, you see evidences of the judgment of God even to this day upon that land. 